JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for December the 2nd. I am Harlambos Pissuros, head of research here at uh, JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against all but two of the other major currencies on Wednesday during the Asian session Thursday. It underperformed only against the yen, while it was found virtually unchanged against the Swiss franc. The, green, the greenback gained the most versus the Aussie, the Kiwi and the Canadian dollar. The strengthening of the US dollar and the Japanese yen combined with the weakening of the risk-linked Aussie, Kiwi and Luni suggests that market sentiment turned uh, back to risk on at some point yesterday, to excuse me, to risk off at some point uh, yesterday and today in Asia. Indeed, although European indices continued, their, reco their recovery started during the Asian trading yesterday, Wall Street saw all three of its main indices closing in the red, with sentiment turning more mixed uh, today in Asia. In our view, the deterioration in the broader sentiment during the US session confirms our choice not to trust the prior recovery. Remember that we couldn't see any fundamental catalyst behind the rebound and that's why we classed it as a corrective move. It seems that investors' main concern remains the uncertainty surrounding the Omicron coronavirus variant and the implications any new restrictions could have to the, glo to the global economy. Indeed, Wall Street came under selling interest as soon as we had the first detection of the new variant in the US. Some say that its symptoms are uh, mild and uh, that current vaccines are still effective against it, while others express concerns over the, over the transmissibility and the vaccine effectiveness. Now, despite some being more optimistic or better say less pessimistic uh, than others, the uncertainty by itself may be enough to prompt market participants to, market participants to reduce further their risk exposure. Another reason for doing so may be the hoggish remarks by Fed Chair Jerome Powell before Congress. Yesterday, the Fed Chief testified before the House Financial Committee and repeated the view expressed before the Senate Backing Committee on Tuesday that, that is, the surge in inflation may not be transitory after all and that they may need to accelerate the tapering process. As for our view, we stick to our guns that the coronavirus uh, will stay on the front page of investors' agenda. The World Health Organization said it, said it expected to have more information on the Omicron variant within days, but up until we get an official and justified answer, market, market participants are likely to stay reluctant to massively add risk to their portfolios. We see the case, therefore, we see the case for equities and other risk-linked assets to continue drifting south, while safe havens are likely to stay supported. Now, as for today's events, after meeting on Wednesday on its own, OPEC will sit down with its non-OPEC allies to discuss on oil production. Despite the failed attempt by the US and other governments to release oil from strategic reserves in a bit to lower uh, gasoline prices, both WTI and Brent collapsed on Friday due to concerns that the new COVID variant will have a serious impact on demand. Therefore, with that in mind, we don't expect the cartel to proceed with any bold decisions at this gathering. We expect producers to stick to, uh, to monthly output increases of, of uh, 400,000 uh, barrels per day. That said, it would be interesting to see their updated forecasts. Will they reflect concerns over uh, diminishing demand? If indeed this is the case, another round of oil selling could be possible despite members refraining from, uh, from increasing production instantly. Now, as for the speakers, 
we will get to hear from several Fed members, including Fed Board Governor Randall Quartz, Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic, Richmond Fed President Thomas Barking, and San Francisco Fed President Mary Daly. It will be interesting to see whether these officials agree with uh, Powell's opinion or not. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.